All right, you'll absolutely love the series. So let's get into Ben 10, Hot Takes, Part 3. There should have been more episodes of aliens doing their own thing, either intentionally or by instinct, like Ghost Freaking Big Chill. Totally with this one myself. Save the Last Dance is one of my favorite Alien Force episodes for this reason among many others, and it would have been cool to see aliens like Wrath or Goop escape and do their own thing. Also a big reason why I like Vengeance of Ilgax. Hot take, the Rooters arc is good. Aside from the retcon, it's a very well written story, the darkest plotline of Omniverse, and is very much story tied to the characters while still maintaining the feel of the series. People just need to give it a chance. Also, about the retcon, I prefer Kevin as a mutant instead of an alien, because it's more interesting. But I think Omniverse's retcon was unnecessary because retconning a retcon just causes more mess. It was one of the three retcons that makes no sense anyway. The others was the plumber's retcon in Alien Force and that garbage planet named Primus. While I agree that the Rooter's arc was inherently decent, I'm not a fan of Cervantes and I find his voice and look a bit annoying and generic, but his fight with Ben and the way Cervantes takes Kevin into his grasp was pretty well told. I never personally knew about the retcon growing up because I missed the Ultimate Alien episode with Ragnarok or whatever he's called, so I never knew Kevin's backstory was so messed up. Atomics was underused for such a powerful alien. He should have been in the show at least a couple times, even though he was in three episodes. Atomics was a shoehorned alien that was trying to be cool while having zero of the charm of Alien X or any other powerhouse alien. It was kind of adorable how they tried to make an Atomic X fusion for Ben 10,000, as if Atomics was anywhere near as cool as Alien X. Sorry, not sorry. Gwen was constantly and illogically nerfed throughout the entire series because she's as strong as Ben, if not stronger, and they didn't want her to outshine Ben. We got to see her cook an entire army of DNA aliens on her own, but a couple of episodes later, she somehow can't fight a bunch of Forever Knights on her own. This is absolutely true. When the creators made Gwen an anodite, one of the stupidest decisions ever, by the way, that meant that Gwen could be more powerful than Ben. Morningstar even said this in an episode once. But then in one episode, she can't handle a welding gun being thrown at her. I guess it's hard to make Ben the most powerful while also maintaining a powerful set of secondary characters. But still, Gwen was way too inconsistent throughout the series. Alien Force was far too quick to establish a status quo of this group dynamic. Stuff like adding Kevin to the team as a good guy and the blooming relationship between Gwen and Kevin needed a longer stretch of time to be believable. I don't really see this one. While it was admittedly pretty quick how Kevin became part of the team, you also have to remember that it didn't become status quo until basically the second season. In Kevin's big score, we had an episode where Kevin basically betrayed the team, and they almost split up from there. In All the Glitters, Ben and Kevin disagreed on adding Morningstar to the team. In Peer Pressure, they begin to joke around more with each other and mess with each other a lot. In What Are Little Girls Made Of, Gwen kisses Kevin. And later, it's revealed that he's become part of the team because he wanted to become a plumber like his dad was. So this idea that Kevin was immediately added to the team is not only untrue, it's actually the complete opposite. The writers edged him into the trust of the audience very carefully, and it's one of the reasons why Alien Force Season 1 is so legendary. I'm not sure if this is a hot take or not, but Season 3 Alien Force Ben wasn't that bad. It made sense after defeating the hybrid, and getting all these awards from all different species is bound to give anyone an ego trip, and I think people were overreacting a little. I actually agree, contrary to what my videos might imply. While I stand by the fact that Season 3 Three made Ben a little bit too cocky, just to get more ratings because kids like Childish Ben more. But I feel like Ultimate Aliens Ben cockiness was justified because of his achievements. It wasn't too much and it wasn't too little. But Alien 4 Season 3 is just a brat, and I think that's different from an ego trip. Fast Track is actually good. I understand that he's basically useless since Ben has faster aliens, but that doesn't mean he's bad. His design is simple but cool, and his humanoid body makes his running scenes look superb, since I love seeing speedsters like Quicksilver or The Flash running. And his voice fits his design. I don't think he deserves all the hate. But you're missing a very fundamental aspect of Fast Track. He's a complete ripoff of Accelerate. I really like it when aliens have non-humanoid designs, like Stinkfly, Wild Mutt, Brainstorm, etc. I think it adds a bunch of cool variety to the show. Me too. Looking at the classic art for the show in pre-production, most aliens were literal humanoid aliens, so I'm glad that they did more animals and non-humanoid designs later on. Good take. Omniverse is the best show, Ben's not too egotistical and too mature, and the animation is way better. I like the art style a lot too. I agree with all that, but it's still certainly not the best. Here's a long one. I'm gonna give a practical take. Vengeance of Vilgax was good until Diamond Head came out. People say the Diamond Head moment was great or that it was the best moment of season 3, but that moment was what ruined Alien Force and in turn Ultimate Alien for most people. Vilgax getting beaten by Diamond Head was atrocious. It also makes no sense how earlier Vilgax was in a completely different league from fully grown up bounty hunter Tetrax, while the 10 alien powered Vilgax got beat by an adolescent Diamond Head. I still don't get it. Why didn't they just go with a way big defeating Vilgax? again. We haven't really seen way big fight up to that point, just see him destroy stuff. Vilgax is supposed to be way more powerful at this moment, Darkseid's avatar level strong. Vilgax has issues of cheating, 
Now both of them are at their prime, and Vilgax in fact defeating him after a huge fight, blood bruises and all, he finally accepts Ben as his true rival, and also helps give the audience closure of Ben properly defeating him with his most powerful alien, not throwing him into space or erasing him or something. That would in turn make the series much better by making Vilgax an actual threat for some time. Well, you kinda lost me towards the end, but I personally love Diamond Head kicking the crap out of Vilgax. It felt so much more rewarding than just Way Big stepping on him. I mean, we literally saw Way Big throw him into space in the movie right before the show. The reason that Way Big didn't fight Vilgax would be because that's incredibly predictable in the plot of the episode. He wanted to turn into Way Big, and that wouldn't have had any significant character development on Ben, but he turned into Chroma Stone and got the crap kicked out of him, almost dying completely. This taught him to not underestimate Vilgax and not be so arrogant. Another reason why I hate Ben's characterization in season 3 is because it could have been wrapped up after he defeated Vilgax. His arc would have finished and his ego deflated. Anyway, Chroma Stone's death also led to this epic moment where Ben comes back and turns into Diamond Head, a fan favorite for the first time in Alien Force. And the reason he was able to beat Vilgax when Tetrax couldn't is because, come on, Ben has had tons of experience with Diamond Head since he was 10. Also, who the frick cares? It's an epic fight scene, that's really all it boils down to. I appreciate this complicated take, but I have to respectfully disagree wholeheartedly. Someone doing Ben 10 content in 2021 other than Ink Tank? A blessing from the Lord. Love you, bro. Now that we did all the major ones, let's introduce the new Lightning Round. After rewatching the series and finishing the rewatch a few weeks ago, I think the Young Ben episodes in Omniverse were some of the best in the whole Omniverse series. Yeah, not really for me. I really wish they made a continuation of the series with Ben, Gwen, and Kevin exploring the galaxy like they hinted at at the end of Omniverse. Me too. I think the time travel and whole time war arc was the best arc in Omniverse. Same. In the reboot series, I think Yuri Lowenthal voicing Vilgax was pure genius. Same. Gwen and Charmcaster's magic is better in Omniverse and Classic than in Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Oh uh, no, did you forget about Ledger Domain? Echo Echo's Wall of Sound is one of the best move Ben has ever done with all of his aliens. Yep. The Omnitrix is secretly a troll in disguise. The Omnitrix is kind of a meme. Goop is a really cool alien. Yep. The ultimate alien concept was mostly worthless as most ultimate aliens like Cannonbolt, Way Big, Grey Matter just looked like crap and didn't add any cool features. Thus I feel like it was a shallow marketing gimmick to try and make ultimate aliens stand out from Alien Force. Totally agree. Forearms and Stinkfly's designs after Classic just got worse and worse. Yep. Upgrade's color scheme was better in the reboot. Nope. Omniverse's new aliens are overhated and a fair amount of them are good or alright, but get lumped in with the crappy ones. Uh, no, only Grav Attack and Feedback are decent. Benton Alien Force is the best series. Seasons 1 and 2? Yes. They had the best alien lineup. Yep. The hybrid were the best villains and they had interesting premise. Yep. It introduced tons of good characters? Sure. The only bad thing about it was the lackluster third season. Of course. Also, I like Alien Force intro more than the original series intro. Me too. And that was Ben 10 Hot Takes Part 3. Do you want a Part 4? If you do, leave some more hot takes in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Also, check out parts 1 and 2 for more hot takes with the cards above and the description below. And be sure to join the Discord server for tons of fun shenanigans and follow me on Twitter because I've decided to tweet some of your hot takes that didn't make it here, there. So go and check it out with the link below. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Shalom! So